Hi there and welcome to another Django and HTMX tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to build out a film detail page and we're also going to give users the ability to use HTMX to upload images and associate them with films. So how we're going to do this, we're going to let the user click the films in their list and we're going to use HTMX to load up a new partial such as you can see on the screen now. This loads up the film detail page for this film. We haven't got a lot of information for each film so we'll display a very small template here we can build this out potentially in future tutorials, but we also give users the ability to upload a photo. If it doesn't exist, we'll show a message, but we can then say upload a photo, no country for old men. And then when we click the upload file button, this is going to use HTMX to dynamically upload the file and associate it with the film. And then automatically without any page refreshes from the user, it's going to return the new partial as you can see here with the new image. Now obviously not a CSS tutorial so we could make this look better but the gist of it is we're using HTMX to drive a single page application where we can go between the list view and the detail view and we're also using HTMX to upload files. So let's see how to do that now and dive into the code. So let's start by creating the detail view for the film page. This is going to allow us to click a film and we're going to click the text here that says the film's name and its order number when we click that, it's going to load up a new page using HTMX that contains details about the film and will eventually allow us to upload a file, an image to associate with that film. Currently, if we click, nothing happens. So let's start building this just now. If we go to VS Code and we're going to look at the film list.html, what we're going to start by doing is enclosing the text here that contains the film's name and its order. We're going to enclose that in an anchor tag. And we're going to give that anchor tag some htmx attributes. So first one is going to be hxget. This is going to send a get request to retrieve the detail template. And it's going to go to a URL we'll create in a minute called detail. And we're going to pass to that URL a primary key parameter so that it knows which film that it's going to render. We're also going to pass an hx um, target and that's going to be equal to the film list. The reason for this is that when we return HTML for the detail page, we want to swap it into this film list ID in the DOM. So now we're going to actually create the URL for this detail. If we go to urls.py, we can copy that into the HTMX URL patterns. And you see that it accepts that uh, path parameter for the primary key here. We can now build the view detail that will allow us to deal with this request. So detail, it's going to take the request and the primary key. And let's protect that with login required. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try and get the model instance with this primary key. And we're going to use the get object or 404 method from Django. That takes as a first parameter the model. And it's a user films model and we're going to look it up by the primary key. Get object or 404 is a Django shortcut function. You can import it from the same module as the render function. So that will either return a film instance, a user film instance, or it will return a 404 not found error. So with that, we can now create a context variable where we attach the user film object to a, a variable called user film. And finally, we can render a partial. I'm going to copy the code for this. So we have a partial here called film detail. This is new. We're going to create that now. I've already created an empty file here. For now, we're going to just render out hello. So let's see what happens when we do this. We should now be able to click uh, the text because we've wired up an HX get attribute to that. And it's going to return HTML that we're going to swap into um, the ID of film list. Let's see what happens. And we get back hello. One problem with this is the detail page should not show uh, this stuff at the top here. So I'm going to move that into the film list.html. To do that, go to films.html and this content here from the div down to the HR, just cut that out of there and go to film list.html and we'll paste that right at the top of this file, just in here. And what that will do is that will move that away from the root component, the film component. And when we click a film now, we get hello back. So now that we have that, what I'm going to do is make this template a little bit more interesting. We don't have a lot of data on the films because if you look at the models, we only have a name and we have the order here as well. So let's now go to the template, the film detail template, and I'm going to paste in some HTML here. All we're doing is showing the film's name in an H2 tag and we're showing a paragraph that contains some information about the film. At the bottom, we've got a button, but I'm going to remove this for now. 
So if we refresh this page and we click Fargo, we should now see we have like a detail page. And this is kind of replicating a single page application you'd build in React. We click something and we go to another page. Um, what I'd like to do is add that button back in that will allow us to navigate back to uh, the page we had before, which was this page. Currently we can go from here to the detail page, but we can't go back. So let's see if we can add a button to do that. Let's paste that button back in here and we'll move down these attributes. So we've got an, an HX get request that, that is going to another URL called film list partial. Let's create that URL now. This URL is going to be responsible for returning us to this page here. So let's try and build that now. Within urls.py we'll add another URL and I'll paste that in. And it's now going to load a view called uh, films partial, which I'm going to create in views.py. So login required, protect it again. Within the films partial, we're going to get all of the user's films. And this is going to be a similar query to what we issued up here, where we filter the user film objects by the request user. So let's put that in here. And finally, we're going to return the, the film list.html populated with these films. And we can just copy this render here to do that. So return render, and that should now return us to the page now. There may be some extra steps needed here, but let's see if this works. Uh, if we click Pulp Fiction, we're not actually seeing the button. I think I need to save the film detail page here. We've got the button. Um, so this will go to the film list partial view that we've set up, uh, which is here, and that's going to return the film list that's populated with um, all of the films in our list. And that's going to swap that back into the film list. So it's like a single page application with a, a root element. In this case, the root element's the film list ID, and when we go to the detail page, we swap out the HTML response into that film list. And it's the same when we go from the detail page back to the film list. We get back the list of films and the template, and we swap that back in. So let's see if this works now. If I refresh the page, click Fargo, you see we get the detail page. And if we click the list component, then we go back to this. And we can toggle between different films and the list components and the detail components. So that's pretty cool and it's pretty useful as well. Now what we're going to do is build out the detail page a bit by adding the ability to upload a file. So if we click Fargo, we want to see a poster or an image that will show us some details about Fargo. Let's see how to do that now. Now in order to upload an image, we need to set some settings within the Django project. Now the two settings that we need to do are the media directory and the media root settings. So let's go to our settings.py file and underneath the static uh, the static variables, we're going to create a media root, and which we're going to set to the base directory and a media directory within that. And I've already created this, um, as you can see here, within my project. Um, currently it's empty, but that's going to be our media directory. And the media URL is going to be slash media, okay? So you need to set these two variables in settings.py and there is uh, one other step you need to do as well. We need to change our projects urls.py which you can find within the urls.py file here. We're going to add the ability for Django to, to return our media files to us and let's see how to do this. We're going to go to the browser here. This is the Django documentation and I'm going to share this link in the description. To serve static files we need to use this thing here and append that to the URL patterns. So I'm going to copy and paste the two imports into our urls.py file. And I'm also going to copy this statement here, which adds to the URL patterns. So with that, we can now access the media files within our project. The next step is to change the model to allow an image to be associated with it. So let me close all these editors and I'm going to go to the models.py and what we're going to do is to the film model we're going to add an image field. So we'll call it photo and it's going to be a models.image field and this takes a, an argument called upload to and we can upload it to any directory within the media directory. Let's call it film photos and what that's going to do is it's going to upload all of the photos, all of the images to the media directory which you can see here and it's going to create a film photos directory within that and upload all of these images to there. We're going to see that in a minute, but let's now go to the next step, which is to ensure that we've got the Pillow Python imaging library installed in our project. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at, if we run the command pip list, and you can do this in your virtual environment, 
or if you're using a tool like Poetry, you can uh, run equivalent commands. I have the package Pillow installed. You need this to work with images in Django. It's a requirement, so make sure you've got uh, Pillow installed. If you don't, you can run the command pip install uh, Pillow, like that. I've already got that, so I'm not gonna need to do that. Let's run the server again. And what I'm going to do now is, um, actually, before I run the server, we need to make the migrations and migrate these changes. Before we make the migrations here, it's asking for a default value, which reminds me that I've forgotten to specify that this should be nullable, because by default, um, films do not have a, an image associated with them. So null equals true, and we'll add blank equals true as well. And then we can make the migrations, and we should be able to migrate these changes after that. So after we've done that, we now have a film model that has a photo, which is an image field attached to it. In the next step, we're gonna change our film detail to show the image if it exists. So let's go to templates, partials, film detail.html. We're gonna add a second div here. And within this div, we're gonna check whether or not the film has a photo. So it's gonna be a Django template if statement, and it's gonna be if user film dot film dot photo. So what this is doing, if we go to models, we have the user film in the template that you can see here, that's returned by the view. It's gonna to check to see if the film associated with this user film, if it has a photo, if it's not null. Okay, so if it's if it's not null, we can do something else, we can do something else. And what we're gonna do if it's null is we're gonna just render a paragraph tag that says uh, no photo with a sad face. And we can close the if block here with an end if. If the user does have a photo, or rather if the if the film does have a photo, we're gonna use an image tag to show it here, okay? So we check to see if the user film, if the film instance that we're interested in has a photo, and if it does, we render its URL and pass that to the source of an image tag. And we have some styles here to make sure that the image doesn't go out of control. So below that, we're now gonna show a very basic form. And what this form is going to do is give the user the ability to upload an image that will be associated with the film. So within the form, I'm gonna paste some code. We've got a CSRF token and we've got an input field of type file that'll allow us to pass the file to the server. For HTMX to work with file uploads, we need to add these attributes to the form element. First of all, HX encoding, and that's gonna be set to multi-part form data. Now this is just something you need to do and HTML, when you're uploading a form that contains files, you need to set the encoding type to multi-part form data. So we've got that, and then we're going to, what we're going to do is post this to a Django URL, which is going to be called upload photo. And again, we're going to pass the user film's primary key to this URL. And we also need um, an HX target here to specify how the response data is going to be swapped in when we upload a photo. So when we submit this form containing the image, we need to specify that it's gonna be swapped into the film list. We're gonna see what HTML is gonna be returned in a minute. Finally, at the bottom of this form, I'm gonna add a quick button, which will allow the user to submit the form. Now, we need to add the view and the URL to deal with this. So first of all, let's add a URL called upload photo. So go to urls.py, and this is the third URL of this tutorial upload photo and it accepts the user film instances primary key. And finally, we need to create a, a view called upload photo. So if we go to views.py and down to the bottom here, we're gonna create an upload photo. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the same get object or 404 here to get the instance here. Now we can view what files have been uploaded in Django using the request.files dictionary. Um, if I return an HTTP response, here of an empty string, we're just gonna see how this works. So let's run the server and we can see what this looks like on the front end. So if I go to the films list, we click Fargo, you see we get our sad face saying no photo here because Fargo has no photo attached to it. And we can go back to the list page here or we can actually try and upload a file here. And if we try and upload a film here, let's say the Fargo film, and we click upload file, we see we get nothing back because we're returning an empty response. But you see that the request.files dictionary is populated with this, um, this file here. So we now need to save this to the models photo field. So let's try and do that now. Uh, within views.py, we're gonna edit this code and we're gonna get this out of request.files. Now it's keyed by photo, and that's because um, within here, 
we have a name of photo as uh, attached to the file input field. So what we're going to do is we're going to get that out and it's going to be photo equals request dot files dot get and we're going to get the photo and that will give us back the actual image object. And then what we can do is we can use the user film that we pulled out of the database. We can follow the form key to its films photo and then we can actually call a save method. The save method is available on Django's image fields. So we can call save and we pass the name, which is going to be the photo.name. That's the first argument. And the second argument is going to be the actual photo itself. And that will save it to that image field. And then finally, we can render a context, user film. And that's going to be equal to user film. And what we're going to do is we're going to return the same detail partial with the new uh, image attached to it. So once we've saved the photo to that particular user film, we will return the partial with the film detail and that will come back here. And if the film didn't have a photo before, um, you would have got this no photo. Now we have attached a photo, so when we re-render re this partial, we should now see the image um, with that source. So let's see if that works now. If I go to the films list and we go to Fargo, and if we try and upload the file here, what we're going to see is hopefully we're going to see the film uh, image appearing here. Unfortunately, we're not getting that here, so let's try and figure out what's going wrong. We've got the photo URL here. You can see it's not finding that within the media URL. So if we check the settings, or rather the URLs.py, I think the problem is I've actually set this to the static URL. Let's try the media URL and also the media root here. Let's see if that does the trick for us. And if we refresh the page and go back to Fargo, now we actually see the image and that's the, the thing we were looking for in the first place here. So now we can upload a file and I could upload um, another file if I wanted to by, let's say, the Godfather here. And that would change the file out to the Godfather. So we can do that now and we can also go back to our list component. And if we wanted to upload the Godfather's film, we could go here and upload the Godfather. When we click upload file, you're going to find that this no photo is replaced because we're, re we're returning the same template but it actually has an image now. So when we click upload file, we get the same thing back but with the image attached. So that shows you how to upload files using HTMX. This is done without any page refreshes. The most important takeaway from that is that within uh, the uploader, you need to set the HX encoding. This is an important attribute to set when you're uploading any files in HTMX. So thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. We're going to be back with more HTMX videos soon. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.